Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about how to factor a polynomial. We'll start with some motivation. We know how to do things like multiply polynomials. For instance, we can FOIL out x plus 2 times x minus 1 and get a different polynomial in return. Generally, you're given the information on the left-hand side and asked to compute the polynomial on the right-hand side. Now the question is, can I reverse this process? In other words, if I were given x squared plus x minus 2, how would I factor it so that I end up with the left-hand side? Whenever I'm talking about factoring, I'm doing the same kind of thing that I would do with numbers. In other words, if I take a number, I can break it up into smaller components. For instance, 10 can be broken up into 5 times 2. In the right settings, we can do the same kind of things with polynomials. For our first instance, we'll look at a polynomial and try to factor out the greatest common factor. So consider the polynomial 6x cubed plus 3x squared plus 12x. We'll examine each term to see if there are any numbers or copies of x that we can pull out all at once. Upon this evaluation, we notice that every number has a factor of 3, and that every term has at least one copy of x. So this means that we can factor 3x from every term of the polynomial. When I take 3x away from 6x cubed, I leave behind a 2x squared. When I take 3x away from 3x squared, I leave behind an x. And when I take 3x away from 12x, I leave behind a 4. Then I factor the 3x out and leave behind the remaining quantity and the parentheses. So I did exactly what I wanted to do. I've taken a large polynomial and wrote it as the product of two polynomials with smaller degree. Let's try this again with the polynomial 8x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus x. Unfortunately, 2 is not a factor of every term because the coefficient of x is negative 1. But there is an x present in every term, so we can factor that out. Rewriting the polynomial in a similar way to what we did upstairs, we can factor out the x, and leave behind 8x cubed minus 2x squared minus 1, and then we're done. In the next slides and in part 2 of this video, we'll talk about what to do when there is not a greatest common factor present in every term. Another factorization method is called factoring by grouping. This can be used when looking at a four-term polynomial. So consider the polynomial x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 2. So I don't have a greatest common factor that I can take from every term of this polynomial. I do have x's present and I have 2's present, but not everywhere. But I can start on a smaller scale and notice that the first two terms have a greatest common factor of x squared, and the last two terms have a greatest common factor of 2. So what I'm going to do is factor x squared and 2 away from those respective parts of this polynomial and rewrite my expression as x squared times the quantity x plus 1 plus 2 times the quantity x plus 1. So I am doing something very similar to what I did in the previous slide, just on a smaller scale. But we notice that we have the quantity x plus 1 showing up in two different locations. So what I can actually do is factor out the x plus 1 and leave behind the x squared and the 2. Doing so gives me a revised expression that looks like this. This is factoring by grouping. The idea is we looked at this polynomial and figured out which pairs of terms actually do share common factors, and once I extracted those factors, I happened to leave behind the same types of quantities, namely x plus 1. So x plus 1 became its own greatest common factor in its own way. So we factored it out, and then I landed on the expression x squared plus 2 times x plus 1. Again, I did exactly what I wanted to do. I started with a large polynomial and factored it into a product of two polynomials of smaller degree. Let's look at another example. Consider the polynomial 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 3. Since we're factoring by grouping, I need to look for pairs of terms that share common factors. For starters, I can see there are two terms that have 2s, and I can see two terms that have minus 3s. So I'll group all of those together, I'll factor out the 2x, and I'll factor out the minus 3. In so doing, I leave behind two copies of x squared plus 1. Now my next step is to take x squared plus 1 and factor it out, leaving behind 2x minus 3. Again, my goal is achieved. I took a polynomial of degree 3, and I found out how to write it as a product of a degree 1 and a degree 2 polynomial. That's factoring. Unfortunately, not every degree 3 polynomial factors by grouping, but you do see a lot of nice examples, especially in a college algebra class. Now we'll talk about how to factor degree 2 polynomials whose leading coefficient is 1. The goal of this process is to find factors of the number c 
such that when you add these factors together, you get b in return. If such factors exist, then we'll be able to write x squared plus bx plus c as x plus s times x plus t, where s and t are these numbers that we have to find. When we find s and t, they need to have the property that b is equal to s plus t and c is equal to s times t. These numbers don't always exist, but when they do, we will be able to factor a degree 2 polynomial into the product of degree 1 polynomials. While this general setup looks a little weird, the circled quantity is what we're ultimately looking for. Let's look at some examples. Consider the polynomial x squared plus 5x plus 6. We're playing a bit of a numbers game here, so we're going to start off with some trial and error. We need to look at the constant term of this polynomial, which is 6. We know that 6 factors into 6 times 1, so let's set up this product of degree 1 polynomials. x plus 6 times x plus 1 has that form that we saw in the previous slide that was circled. Like I said, this is just trial and error, so let's FOIL this out and see what we get. Once we do this, we land at the polynomial x squared plus 7x plus 6. This isn't what we started with, so we can conclude that x plus 6 times x plus 1 is not the factored form of x squared plus 5x plus 6. This means that this factorization of 6 is not what we wanted. Instead, let's look at 6 equals 2 times 3. Then I can try foiling out x plus 2 times x plus 3. When I do this, I actually get x squared plus 5x plus 6, which is the polynomial that we started with. So I can conclude that x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals x plus 2 times x plus 3. So when you're doing problems like these, you need to start with your constant term, in our case 6, and look at factors that could act up to our middle term, which is 5. Surely 6 times 1 didn't work because 6 plus 1 is equal to 7, but that's why 6 equals 2 times 3 works because 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. This whole thing is just a numbers and matching game. I am factoring my constant term and then adding those factors together to see if I get the coefficient of x in the polynomial that I started with. Let's look at some more examples. Consider the polynomial x squared minus 4x minus 21. Since I have negatives here, I have to be a little bit more careful with how I'm dealing with these factors. Our constant term is negative 21, so I need factors of negative 21 that sum to negative 4. Once I've found factors that might work, I'll place them inside my quantities here, FOIL out, and see what I get. I can try looking at 21 equals 21 times 1, but I already know that 21 and 1 will never sum to 4, so I can go ahead and scratch these out. But next, I can try looking at 21 equals 3 times 7. I think I'm in the right ballpark because I know that 3 minus 7 is equal to negative 4. I also know that this product should come out to negative 21, so I know that either 3 or 7 should be negative and the other number should be positive. Since negative 3 plus 7 is equal to positive 4, I can scratch this factorization but 3 minus 7 is equal to negative 4, so this is the factorization I think I should look at. By that, I mean I'm going to regard negative 21 as 3 times negative 7. Once I place this information in my quantities above and FOIL out, I get the polynomial x squared minus 7x plus 3 minus 21, which will simplify to x squared minus 4x minus 21. Therefore, the correct factorization of this polynomial is x plus 3 times x minus 7. So the way I solved this problem in the previous slide was a little bit more trial and error and I wrote a lot more things down, but the point of that was just to get you used to what wrong things might look like. Because it is possible to pick incorrect factorizations of our constant terms and not get the right thing. But in this slide, I took a more efficient approach. I started analyzing possible factorizations of negative 21 and I looked for ones that would add to negative 4. Once I did that, I can plug and chug and check my work and find my factorization. For our next example, consider the polynomial x squared plus 3x minus 18. So just like before, I'm going to play with different factors of 18 and see which ones sum up to 3. For starters, I know that 18 times 1 isn't going to get me anywhere near 3, so I can cross that one out. I can also look at 18 equals 9 times 2, but that doesn't seem to get me close to 3 either, so I'll cross it out. However, 18 equals 6 times 3 is definitely worth a try. I'm saying this because 18 ends up being a negative number in our polynomial, so exactly 1 of 3 or 6 should be negative. Like I did upstairs, I can try both possibilities. I know that 3 plus negative 6 is equal to minus 3, but negative 3 plus 6 is equal to positive 3, 
So I'm going to try 18 equals negative 3 times 6 as my factorization. When I plug these factors into my quantities upstairs and FOIL out, I get x squared plus 6x minus 3x minus 18, which simplifies to x squared plus 3x minus 18. Therefore, I have found the correct factorization of this polynomial. Be sure to check out part 2 for the AC method.